Hello and welcome guys to another video and today we're going to be having a look at the first round of the British Indoor Karting Championship. So this was the locals round, so this was at Dundee Team Sport. So going into this I qualified P2, so it was an average of your three best lap times in uh, I think it was a three month period. So we were P2, Ross was P1, uh, so I knew that Ross was most likely going to win the race because he was considerably quicker. But I knew that I had a chance for the podium. So this was the free practice times. As you can see, we were P2 by five thousandths of a second. As you see, Ross two tenths quicker than anyone else. But only five thousandths separating P2 and P3 was incredibly close. This was qualifying one tenth of a second separating the top four. So extremely close there. As you see though, Ross qualified in P3. So I knew that... Ross was definitely going to pass us quite early on because he was quite quick. So my goal was to try and not hold up Ross too much and just let Ross pass and then try and follow Ross because I knew if I started battling with Ross it might allow the number 9 cart to pull away. I think it was Jack Sharp in the number 9 cart. So this was the formation lap. As you can see we're just getting led by basically a pace car driven by one of the staff members so that lead car the number 10 is just doing basically a formation lap and then we do a roll a single file rolling start so as you see i'm just trying to get some temperature into the tires because it is a concrete floor and it's basically a giant warehouse that's it's not super hot or anything so you do want to try and warm up your tyres as quick as possible. So here we're about halfway around the lap, just coming into the final sector. Now just after this hairpin you're going to notice number 10 cart start to pull away and then the number 9 cart will do the start as he has qualified P1. So as you see there the number 9 cart starting to back off just a little bit and now we can go racing, we're just waiting for the green flag and you'll notice the green flag at the top there, it's basically light and as you see there is Ross Honeyman so I just let try not to defend too much from Ross as you see he gets us into the second hairpin so now the goal is just to try and follow Ross the best we can As you see, very quickly, Ross is going to start to close that gap up. Now at the start, I think I was a bit too cautious. I was trying not to make any mistakes or clip, clip the wall or slide too much. And I think I was just a bit overly cautious. I should have pushed a little bit harder at the start. But yeah, let's just have a look and see how we get on. So again, this is a 15 minute race. So it's not a massive amount of time, although like I said the laps are about 26 seconds. So you're getting just over 30 laps in your 15 minutes. And as you see Ross just really closing that gap up right on the back of the number 9 cart now. So coming into the hairpin, it seemed to be the exits of the hairpin especially, that both me and Ross seem to be quicker than the number 9 cart, as you see there, especially on that one. And I'm not sure if it was the cart, the tyres, or if it was just the lines he was taking, but definitely seemed to be on the exit of the hairpins that he seemed to lose a bit of time. So it could have just been the tyres or it could have maybe been that he was taking a slightly different line because he did seem to take a much wider line than both myself and Ross. As you see there, Ross almost getting alongside on the exit of that hairpin. Now coming round the final corner, as you see Ross gets a good exit, looks to go for the inside but has to back out, we're not quite far enough alongside yet. Coming into the hairpin again, this seemed to be where both me and Ross gained the most time on the number 9 car. 
So I'm not sure, like I say, if it was the line he was taking, it did seem like he was going wider. And I'm not sure if that was deliberate or if that was maybe he was sliding a bit more on the exit. But as you see now, we are right on the back of Ross onto the exit of this hairpin. I'm thinking that maybe the number 9 is starting to feel a bit of the pressure, I'm not sure. But as you see again on the exit there, getting a good run. Ross looks to the inside, but not quite close enough. And now I think it's here that he's going to look for a move again. On the exit of the final corner, gets a good run. And the number 9 car goes a bit wider, so Ross gets that inside line. And now, very smart of the number 9 car there to back out and then immediately take the racing line because if he had tried to hold the inside into that hairpin he might have really compromised his exit and allowed us to get alongside him into the next hairpin so that was actually very smart driving by the number 9 car tried to hold on to the lead but when he saw Ross on the inside he did just back out so he could take the racing line again which was very smart driving because as you see he then is able to stay on the back of Ross for a little bit as we start to fall back. So that was very smart driving from him there. So as you see, over the next few laps, I'm not going to talk much, but we start to fall back a bit. So you'll notice, up until about the second half of the race, we do start to fall back a little bit. As you see, we've fallen back quite a bit now. A number of cart lengths. I'm going to guess this is probably about at least a second. So as you see, from about this point onwards, we're going to start slowly closing that gap. The number 9 car is starting to make a number of small mistakes. I'm not sure if it's over pushing or if it's the tyres, but just slightly small mistakes, just losing a little bit of time here and there in some of the corners. And as you see, we're going to slowly close this gap up until we're right on his bumper.
So here we're really closing that gap up now. Definitely less than a second. It's now only about a cart length in between us. On that left hairpin we seem to gain quite a bit of time. And I'm not sure if it's how I was turning it in or how much earlier I was on the throttle, but we seem to gain a lot more time. And then this left-hander hairpin, I seem to be a bit more consistent. And then this right-hander hairpin, we definitely seem to gain a little bit of time there. See on that left-hander, we seem to have to turn a bit more than we were to get on the right racing line. And then this hairpin as well, seemed to just be that little bit quicker on that final sector. And now that probably about two second gap has completely disappeared. And now we're right on his bumper. But... It's only a 15 minute race. It's not a 30 minute race, it's not a 20 minute race. It's only a 15 minute race. However, since it is 26 second laps, you are getting a little over 30 laps in the race. But still, not a massive amount of time. But as you can see, right on his rear bumper now. So now we're just looking for any big mistakes from him. If he makes a big mistake, goes wide, locks up the brakes, slides a bit too wide, that's where we want to go for the move. Because there isn't any heavy braking zone, there's only one place that you slightly tap your brakes, which is that top hairpin. Coming round into the first two corners is full throttle. This corner you lift off slightly then straight on the throttle. This is the corner that you tap the brakes and then turn in hard straight on the throttle. And then here's obviously full throttle, then into this right hander it's like a tiny lift and then full throttle. Here you lift turning quickly, straight on the throttle again to get the rotation. Here stay on the throttle, just turn in quickly to get that little bit of slip angle. Sometimes you need to lift depending on the cart, you might need to lift for that final corner. But since there isn't any corners that you really have to slow down for, it's very difficult to get alongside because when you're this when you're really close you need to be considerably quicker to actually get alongside and in the inside of the next corner. So one of the things you've just got to really focus on is try and force a mistake from the car in front. As you see there he made a little one into that hairpin but not big enough for us to get alongside. But now look how close we are. We are almost touching his rear bumper. Into this fast right hand though, there was, I don't think there was any contact, I think we touched once, but as you see, on this sector there, I was almost pushing his cart, we were so close. I don't think we had any contact where I properly hit the back of him, but I think on one or two of the exits, almost just slightly pushing the number 9 cart, but not quick enough to pull alongside, but as you see, right on his rear bumper now. It was incredibly close. Look at that. No contact, but right on his rear bumper. I think from track side it would have looked like we were almost pushing each other. It was so close. As you see there, he had a little bit of a slide on the exit there, maybe over pushing the cart. So I'm now just really focusing on trying to get him to make this a small mistake just enough for us to get alongside. As you see again, here we actually push his cart just a little bit because I wasn't quick enough to get alongside. He held that inside line, so there wasn't anywhere for me to go to get alongside. So we actually just pushed his cart just a little bit. We were that close on the exit there. Again, really close. This right hander wasn't great for being this close because if the cart in front slides too much, it's very easy to have a big piece of contact there. We've had it in a few practice sessions where the cart in front has slid and then you're not able to avoid it or you're not able to slow down in time. There I messed up a little bit in the first sector losing a little bit of time but then starting to close that gap up again. Here the video is going to jump just a few seconds because the camera gets to a certain length and then it restarts itself and goes again. So as you see we just missed I think two corners or something there of the recording. But then into the hairpin again, just trying to close that gap up again. We've got about a cart length between us. Into this hairpin again, right on his bumper now. Close that gap up on the exit. Into 
the final sector right on his bumper now just trying to get alongside it is incredibly close on the exit here not close enough to get alongside but right on his rear bumper into this left hander hairpin he makes a little bit of a mistake I'm looking to see if I can get alongside but just not close enough again I get a good exit but again not good enough to get alongside but now watch for the lights at the side of the track because unfortunately as we come round this left hander hairpin the lights go yellow and I look to see if someone spun but unfortunately you can't see it on the camera the marshal was waving the checkered flag that was the end of the race so we finished good race fantastic from Ross Honeyman to win the race and uh, good job to Jack Sharp in front of us for his defending and not making any big mistakes because he was able to keep us behind good battle really enjoyed it thanks to the staff as well the carts as well seem to be a lot more even than they were in some of the practice nights I went to which was really nice especially you saw that battle there wasn't any big difference between the two carts which made it a lot closer racing so here are the fastest laps from the race as you can see Ross Honeyman gets a 26.5 so fastest lap of the race Jack Sharp 26.7 and we also get a 26.7 and then P4 gets a 26.7, Dane 26.9, uh, JJ 27.2. So we were quicker than Jack Sharp but just wasn't able to get alongside or get the move done. So really nice battle, here are some of my favourite pictures. Thank you to Susie for the pictures, they all turned out really nice. Thanks to my mum for the crowd cheering and also my dad for finishing my work so I could leave early and get to this race. Um, but yeah, these are some of my favourite pictures, so we'll just have a look through them now. And all, as always guys, thank you very much for watching the video. We will be going to Newcastle for round two, so I will make a video on that. Make, be sure to follow my Instagram, because I'll put some updates on that as well for that race. But as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you again next time.